Welcome back to Real Florida Magazine. Welcome back today on the beautiful campuses of Florida Panhandle Technical College, talking to Christy Basinger, talking about the educational homestay program. This is something I find particularly um, compelling. Um, as we do all the time, we talk about our children and uh, our youngest child is uh, currently working on Capitol Hill for uh, one of the senators and he has had the opportunity to travel all over the world in exchange programs. This program, very similar uh, opportunities for people, uh, children, students in this case, from France and Spain to visit us right here in Northwest Florida, the greater Panama City area, the uh, uh, Florida Panhandle. Um, and being able to soak up that uh, which sometimes we laugh about, but certainly at the end of the day is our culture. Uh, and they're going to go back to France and Spain saying, y'all, uh, this is one you're not going to want to miss. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, as mentioned, our guest today is Christy Basinger. Talking about the Educational Homestay Program, thanks for taking the time to visit us today, Christy. You contacted us, um, and, and this is something that uh, obviously, finding ourselves here on the campuses of the Technical College is obviously a fitting subject, but thanks for taking the time to visit us today. Well, thank you for having me, Paul. I have been working with Educational Homestay Programs since January, not very long. It was right up my alley because my son, Rainey, who is a senior at Vernon and about to graduate, actually got the opportunity to go to the Netherlands for a whole year for his 10th grade year. He had an amazing experience. And last year, we hosted a boy from Taiwan named George. Had a wonderful experiencing, experience hosting him. A guy named George from Taiwan. Exactly. And that's one of the cultural things that we learn is that in Taiwan, everyone takes on an American name. He has a mom named Lucy, a dad named Eric, and a sister named Audrey. But his actual name is Quan Chong Hong. Yeah, I knew it wasn't George. Um, so, wow, grab a rope and hang on. You don't wait for the questions. You just want to jump right in there. And that's good. Um, first of all, let's get down to the nuts and bolts. Educational homestay program. Talk a little bit about what that is, how long it's been in existence, where it started, and what it's all about. Okay. Educational Homestay Programs is a nonprofit division of Education First. Education First is a worldwide company, language and travel, that's been around for 50 years. And Educational Homestay Programs is 35 years old. And for several years, they have been bringing well over 3,000 students into the Florida area and other states as well. And we have exchange programs for students from various countries that last from two to four weeks. Wow, so this is a private business that, that is at the root of this, or is this a, a quasi-governmental agency? No, it is not a governmental agency. It definitely is a language and travel company. However, this particular aspect of it is nonprofit. And my job, which is a really fun, cool job, is to find host families for exchange students that are coming to the area for a two to four week. For actually, in this case, they'll be here for two and a half weeks for an immersion program. Okay. Now, you deal strictly with the Florida Panhandle, or do you do this for other areas of the country? This is, I do not do this for other areas of the country. However, I am working in the Panama City, Chipley area. We are including finding host families in Bonifay, in Mariana, in the surrounding area right here. And it's giving kids in another country, aged 14 to 17, the opportunity to come here and hang out with an American family and learn about what our life is like here in this area. Yeah, and you say learn what our, like, our life is like. I can't help but contrast that student that comes to New York City or to San Francisco versus the guy that comes to Esto or Bonifay. Right, right. <laughs> they go home and they think they were on different planets. Definitely. Um, this is very cool. As we said in the pre-show and as you and I sort of discussed briefly, to me the win here is as much for our families and students as it is for those who are visiting. Um, what is the age group of these uh, visiting students? These students are 14 to 17 years old, Okay. So high school, basically. Basically high school, teenagers. We're bringing over 17 students from Spain and 15 students from France. Additionally, we're bringing over one adult leader from each of those countries who will be a help to me, who will be able to speak to the students in their own language if that is needed. And they will most likely be in their early 20s, those two people. So 32 students and a couple of chaperones, and you need host families. That's basically what we're here to talk about, is that you have the need for 
homes um, and those uh, respective host families that are willing to, to welcome a student or two, um, and I'll let you address that, into their home and that total immersion uh, experience. That has got to be the most frightening thing in the world and one of the most exhilarating things in the world at the same time. Talk about that host family and what would uh, be the qualifications to be able to participate. Okay. Uh, it's a very simple program for the host family. Um, it, this is not a difficult program to sell. It is a volunteer program. There's no cost involved except you have to provide food for the student, a little bit of transportation, and a bed. But finding the type of host family that would be interested in a really cool multicultural experience is what this is all about. When you meet somebody who is willing to take in a student from another country, which often ends up being a very adventurous type of person because what other kinds of kids are going to be willing to leave their family in their country for two and a half weeks? And so these host families take this child into their home for two and a half weeks and basically make that student a part of their family for two and a half weeks. First question that would come to my mind were I a prospective host family is that how are these kids vetted? Um, you know, horror stories, um, you know, lots of movies made on the premise of uh, that visiting student. Uh, the next thing you know, he's running through the house at midnight with a butcher knife. <laughs> Obviously, I'm having a little bit of fun with that, but how is that vetting process accomplished and how would I as a host or prospective host family uh, be assured that, um, you know, this, this kid was safe? These kids do you go through a background check in their country before they come over here, as well as they take an English proficiency test. Some of the families that I have spoken to have had concern. They say, I don't speak Spanish or I don't speak French. But these students are coming over to improve their English language skills as well. And that's one of the reasons why if a family chooses to host two students, we would only place one from France and one from Spain with that family so that therefore the students would be forced to speak English with each other and wouldn't get caught up in speaking their own native tongue. Yeah, otherwise you get two kids over there on their cell phones, yuckety yuckety all day long, and, right. and they're excluding everybody else. Makes total sense. Right. Not to say that you're probably not going to have that with a couple of teenage girls or teenage boys. And, and that's the cool part is that the lifelong bonding, potential friendships and potential relationships, I would imagine the potential for that, to overuse the word potential, is, um, is really, really strong. I mean, the opportunity, not just for that two and a half weeks, but this could be a lifelong relationship. It, it absolutely is. While we hosted George for an entire year and loved him and met his mom, this particular program being only two and a half weeks is a great way for a family to get their feet wet. It's not, a, it's not an extended period of time to commit oneself to. And in spite of that, you would be amazed at the bond that you can develop with a student that lives in your home for two and a half weeks. I have a friend that does the same kind of work that I do in another part of Florida. She hosted a student from Russia, and a year or two later, the family from Russia invited her and her friend over, and she had an amazing trip. So, in a very short period of time, you can develop an amazing relationship with somebody from another part of the world. We talked sort of about the vetting process and about the fact that um, uh, there's a background check. I would imagine it works both ways. What are the, um, what's, uh, what's the process if a host family or prospective host family um, wants to get involved? I would imagine there is exactly that, a background check. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about the whole process for a host family to get involved. Um, there's a very short one-page application that we fill out together. I have a home visit. Some references are listed. It usually takes me a few minutes to call the references and tell me why you think this particular family would be a good host family. Then I send this person a link for a background check, which takes less than five minutes online. They get an email confirmation. Shortly after that, as we are collecting profiles from these students in the other country, we begin to get matched the host family up with a particular exchange student. They get to look over the profile. They may say, this student doesn't, you know, based on hobbies and interests, this student probably wouldn't work for us. But my experience is that most families are very excited to meet this student who has written a little paragraph to their host family, has listed their hobbies and interests in their email, and we ask the families to try to get in contact with these students before they come over and build a relationship with them. They can do that through Skype, they can do that through email. Uh, one family here in town that has connected with their girl from Spain that they're gonna host 
contacted the girl on Instagram and have already, we've got teen girls here and we've got teen girls over there and they're connecting on social, na on social network and it's working out wonderfully. Yeah, so you know, if you've got a student come over that's kind of geeky and is a, they're going into a family who's also very computer oriented and, and again, for lack of a better term, and it's not a, a derogatory term, that geeky aspect, or if somebody comes over and is into sports, you'd probably more likely want them to be with, some, with a family who's more sports oriented, just so that there wouldn't be a situation where everybody's going their own way all the time. When we first talked on the phone, you mentioned that um, uh, you do require supervision. So, for instance, um, you wouldn't put a, a visiting exchange student into a family that vacates the home and has latchkey children uh, during that summer period. Uh, it would be a situation where you would want to have the adult supervision. Supervision. How far does that extend? For instance, there are going to be times when an adult's not going to be in the room. Uh, there are going to be times when maybe an adult runs down to the corner grocery stores. What are the parameters for that supervision and for that, um, that adult presence? Well, while we have some programs in Florida where the students have breakfast with their family and then they're dropped off at a course center for all day courses and the family picks them up at 5.30 in the evening, this immersion program works with a family that has an adult that is home and available most of the time. It is definitely not a situation where you can say, you know, good morning, I'm off to work and I'll see you in eight hours. We want a family to be able to be involved, you know, with an adult with this kid do fun things with them, interact with them, and whatnot. So in a perfect world, a stay-at-home parent would be a perfect match. Right. A stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home stay dad. A stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad. I have been finding that some families are adjusting their schedules. They're able to do that. Or they have one parent that works at night and one that works during the day, and they, they adjust in that way. I have other situations where I have one student that is hosting a a student and another another friend of that student that is and they have plans to get their kids together it's pretty flexible you make this kid a part of your family you take them wherever you go you cook with them you go to the springs with them you and you've got 32 total students um, how many of those have you already placed we have placed about half about 19 or so Okay, and um, your drop dead date, and obviously the, the reason for the immediacy of, of us getting together and talking about this, uh, so that you can secure those uh, host families, what is the drop dead date by which time uh, a family could um, apply and still leave enough time to be vetted and background checks and all that? We are aiming to get this program complete by June 1st. June 15th is actually the very last date, but we are aiming to get it complete by June 1st. Okay, so you've got uh, the better part of six, seven weeks um, as of today, um, and uh, obviously depends on when you watch this. You may be watching a year from now. However, there's no bad time to be aware of the program, and to that end, if somebody wants to get involved and they don't see this show for a year or two and then come across this show on the internet somewhere, um, what is the best way to find out about this program? Is there a website? There is a website. They can look at ef.com slash EHP to find out a little bit more about educational homestay programs or they can contact me Christy Basinger my cell phone is 850-849-7667 those contacts on the screen right now so um, if you just want to get a little bit more of a, uh, a thumbnail sketch of the entire program you can go to the website find out uh, I'm sure videos photos lots of other information would that, is that the main national website, so no matter where in the country you live, you'd be able to find something in your area? Yes. If somebody emails me or contacts me by my cell phone and I can get an email address, I can email out several flyers, which include some videos that they can watch, some very short videos, and get a better idea of the program. There is something else that I want to mention to you, and that is that during the two and a half weeks that they're here, on Monday and Thursday of one week and Monday and Thursday of the other week, the students are taken to a drop-off location where they go on all-day excursions. And they will be going to Pier Park one day, they will be going to Tallahassee and touring the Capitol, Wakulla Springs, Blue Springs in Mariana, and they're going to have the opportunity to learn to surf at St. Andrews State Park. So those are days that alleviate some of the entertainment factor of the family, and additionally hosting two students helps with that as well.